Okay, so I want to welcome you to today's webinar. Today, our topic um, for Webinar Wednesday is going to be um, Great Explorations and Virtual Field Trips. And I want to welcome you. I'm Carla Kuyper, Director of Tech Integration for East Baton Rouge Parish Schools. And today, we're looking at ways to allow students to explore the universe right from inside the classroom. Um, be sure to connect your audio. If you're having any questions with um, connecting to audio, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes on GoToMeeting. I'm going to place a link in the chat box, which hopefully will help a little bit. So that link is going into the chat box. Be sure when you connect that, um, that you go into audio. Also, if you need to connect to a different device, you can do that as well. And I'll also um, add in the information so you can dial in also. So let me drop that in the box as well. Okay, so there's some information in the chat box if you'd like to dial in to today's webinar using your phone in case um, PC or laptop audio is not quite cooperating fully. I want to mention that this webinar is part of a series um, for fall 2017. Today we are looking at virtual field trips and then um, the next webinar will be on November the 8th and we'll look at math tools for one-to-one -to -one. Um, and then on November 29th science tools and then on December 13th social studies tools for the one-to-one -one classroom and that'll take us through fall of 2017 and we'll start back up again um, after the winter break in January. And so be looking for the January, February, March topics um, coming out sometime in late November, early December. So uh, just to give you a little background on this webinar, this webcast is going to be worth one COU, so sign in. If there's a group of you listening or, or watching at the same time, um, just send me an email with the names of everyone who's watching and I can be sure that you get um, a COU for today's webcast. Materials again are posted in the chat box. The webcast is being recorded and will be shared on YouTube and feel free to ask um, any questions that you may have as I'm going and interrupt um, using the chat box. I welcome your questions. So the purpose of this little webcast is to help you to become familiar with different types of virtual field trips and to help you learn about opportunities to bring them into your classroom. I also want to talk about how you can align virtual field trips to your existing goals and also some best practices. A virtual field trip is a guided experience that lets students explore content on a theme, a place, um, even the past. And you can bring virtual field trips into your class using websites, or you can sometimes even use apps. Virtual field trips are a good idea, and many teachers use them because oftentimes taking students on a real field trip or on a literal field trip or a realistic field trip, I should say, oftentimes covers more distance than um, students can, can travel. There are also costs. It's also great to use virtual field trips when you'd like students to explore the past or outer space or even the microscopic world in science. And you'll also see some additional reasons why many teachers use field trips. The main one being to support content, increase engagement, and to try to help students get a sense of being, um, an authentic sense, I should say, of being somewhere that they're not actually physically able to get to. 
Virtual field trips might seem like they're really cool, and they are, but they do represent a research-based practice. A virtual field trip, if done correctly and in a sound fashion aligned to content, can provide great cognitive and effective games um, comparable to real-life field trips in many cases. And some best practices. If you decide after today's webcast that you'd like to incorporate an, a virtual field trip in your class, be sure to begin with a clearly defined learning objective. Give the virtual field trip the same consideration that would go into a real life field trip. And then try to make sure that you explore the destination before the actual visit if possible. And of course, preview all content. Structure and supervision is important for virtual field trips just as when you plan um, real field trips. There are four kinds of field trips, and I won't cover each one in depth, but I'll just give you a, a sense of each one as I go through some of the examples that I have. There's a concept exploration, a cultural exploration, concept application, and also virtual tours. And virtual field trips can be created with PowerPoint, Google Slides with hyperlinks. You can create a website or a wiki page using Weebly or Google Sites. You can also create just a Google Doc with hyperlinks and create a virtual field trip for students. You can also use software like Google Earth and mobile apps. So I want to dive into some examples of virtual field trips. So the first example I'd like to share is um, highlighting English language arts. So uh, you can find many, many virtual field trips online that accompany novels and great literature. So for example, in the case of The Diary of a Young Girl, um, the story of Anne Frank, there is a virtual field trip that goes with Anne Frank's life. And so you can take a virtual field trip to the secret annex. So there are, um, there's a wealth of multimedia on this website, including videos, and then the actual virtual field trip itself, where you go into the area where Anne Frank and her family lived during the story itself. All right, welcome. Let's see, I'm going to, going into, um, the area where the story of um, Anne Frank Diary of a Young Girl takes place. So here's the movable bookcase. And you can see I'm moving it around using my, um, my touchpad on my laptop. But you can see students can go in and actually explore the space itself. Hmm? Yeah. So there's a layout of the building that students can explore and then visit the different areas. All right. I have um, one person I'm just going to, I'm going to hit a mute on the mic, I think. Here we go. Okay. It's probably us. Okay, so you can see how you can explore. Students could explore this area virtually and then um, maybe write about uh, their exploration of some of the settings from the story or just to get a better sense uh, and background knowledge of the story itself. There are hundreds of the more of these types of virtual field trips online that go along with different pieces of great literature on a website called Lit Trips. So there are googlelittrips.org, and I'm going to post that link in the chat box. So these are Google Earth themed virtual field trips that accompany many, many books and novels. And that link is in the chat box if you'd like to click on it and visit one of the um, or more of the sites that are that are listed. 
and you can see it's a growing library of virtual field trips. You can search them alphabetically or also by grade. And you can even request a lit trip. The lit trip website was created by a middle school ELA teacher whose students just were not interested in reading at all. And so it's a wonderful resource and it's teacher created. The next lit trip or the next virtual field trip I'm going to share with you is one from history. And so there's a, a forest theater interactive tour. This one comes from Google. Google posts a lot, and I mean a lot, of virtual field trips that are out there. So you can visit many um, historic sites across the United States using the Google Arts and Culture website. And you'll find the link in the chat box. And so students um, learning about Abraham Lincoln or about the times surrounding the end of the Civil War might really enjoy a virtual field trip to Ford's Theater. There's a wealth of multimedia on this website, including a view of the theater itself. Okay, so students could explore the theater and learn more about the, the life of Abraham Lincoln and the times that he lived in. A way to incorporate virtual field trips into science might be to allow students to browse an online museum of science or site. The one that I have linked to today's webinar is the Smithsonian Natural, National Museum of Natural History. There is a mobile app for this virtual field trip as well. So students can select a variety of different exhibits. They can go to current exhibits or past exhibits or they can also check out the permanent collection of the Smithsonian. So this is the Smithsonian from the movies that many of the students um, may be familiar with. And they can take a tour around the building and explore some of the different resources that are available. Again, the trick with virtual field trips is finding the content online that matches the learning goals that you have for the students. In math, a wonderful website exists called realworldmath.org and there are several math virtual field trips that you can bring into your class as well. This is a teacher created website and the website consists of several different virtual field trips that allow students to use measurement, exploration, and all of the math tools that they are learning about and many of the math concepts. They can use Google Earth, there are tutorials on this site. They can do things like estimate distances, um, look at tsunami warnings, and all of this on the realworldmath.org website. Additional examples, Discovery Education does virtual field trips. And there's a link on the, let me go to field trips. And I'll drop that link in the chat box. Here we go. Discovery Ed virtual field trips. And you can take students beyond the walls of the classroom. There are some that are archived that you can um, 
have students access the videos of that virtual field trip or you can register for a live virtual field trip that happens in the future. Um, in these virtual field trips, students can learn about different places, many math and science concepts. They can even learn about STEM careers. So the link to the Discovery Education virtual field trip site is in the chat box. Any questions so far? If you'd like to plan um, any of the, these Discovery Ed virtual field trips in advance for the school year, there's also a calendar as well so that you can check out all of the virtual field trips that they have for this entire school year. and plan lessons around them. I'm going to quickly run through a few more sites that are out there. One is called Project Explorer. It's projectexplorer.org and there are virtual field trips broken out by grade level and then you can also search by different topics and they tend to have a geographic theme so these work really well in the social studies classroom as you're studying different um, areas and covering geography. All right, I just got a message that um, you all are loving these websites. Thank you. I appreciate your, um, your feedback. I'll keep um, the examples coming. So projectexplorer.org. And if um, you have an art teacher, I don't know if there's anyone who teaches art listening in today, but if you, if you do, the Google Art Project has a ton of virtual collections that you, you can explore with students from the Modern Museum of Art to the Getty Museum and Art Institute of Chicago and many more. Google's mission is to bring all of the world's great art museums to students for free in a virtual format. So you're going to notice that these Google virtual field trips are really awesome. One virtual field trip that's really popular with students is also the interactive tour of the White House. So again, in a social studies setting, this one works well. And you'll notice I'm sharing a few additional websites. They have a social studies theme, Colonial Williamsburg. And Colonial Williamsburg, in addition to their uh, virtual explorations. They've even added some webcams as well. So I like sites that have a lot of multimedia and a variety of different ways for students to interact. And um, the Colonial Williamsburg Explorer is also a mobile app on a Google Play and on the App Store. So I've got a few additional field trips and I'm going to drop these into the chat box so you can click on them and interact. So ancient Egypt, Mount Vernon,
and another website that allows students to visit some really stunning and majestic panoramas of the world is called 360cities.net. And it's another great way for students to experience virtual field trips. So through 360 degree photography and video, there's um, almost an unlimited supply of photographs and videos online that students can experience in the 360 format in the uh, virtual reality format. Uh, if students are learning up in uh, science or in a biology class about habitats and animal behaviors, there are many, many zoos that are online as well. You can look for online zoos with virtual tours and also with webcams. And San Diego Zoo is only one example. Our Baton Rouge Zoo has webcams as well. In addition to all the other multimedia. So you can watch a video or you can experience um, the zoo virtually by checking out one of the cams. And with the magic of high speed internet, high speed Wi-Fi, it's almost as if you're there. I've included a slide with a link to some of the other um, webcam content that's available. Uh, one of the things about using webcams um, to do virtual field trips in the classroom is that you do always want to preview the content prior to using it in the class. Um, in the past, I've tried to pull in content from webcams. It can be great when it works out, but when you try to pull in content from a webcam and the webcam's not working, then um, you have to have a backup plan for your virtual field trip on that day. There's also underwater webcams. Here it comes. The website is explore.org and they have a lot of live cameras and this one is the shark cam. And so this one, here's an example of what I was talking about. It's, there's a technical issue with this particular webcam, so I'm going to use a backup plan and go to a different webcam. All right, and while that's still coming up, I'm going to go ahead and put the link in the chat box. All right, here it comes. And you can even see how many people are viewing um, the different webcams that are on this on this website. Another resource that I highly recommend are the Skype virtual field trips. So in addition to Discovery Ed, there are field trips that you can visit in advance. You can book them in advance. Skype virtual field trips are also really, really fantastic. There is an archive, and this is going to take us to the Skype in the Classroom website. The thing I love about this website is that there's a variety of virtual field trips. There are um, ecology field trips, animal field trips, history and culture, and there are collections of virtual field trips on this site. You can register in advance or you can view the archive of web, of web field trips that are on the website. 
you can even find guest speakers for your class on uh, the virtual field trip website for Skype. Um, the question is, in the chat box right now is a really good one. And it's, it, do you need an, an account for the Skype field trip? You can um, access Skype through your Office 365 account. Good question. So you can log into this website with your Office 365 um, EBR email address and password. And uh, so there's even a feature on this website called the Mystery Skype. And what a Mystery Skype is, is a guessing game where two classrooms connect and try to guess uh, where the other class is located based on clues and evidence. Um, some additional examples, the United States National Park Service. Uh, again, Google has many, many connected uh, classrooms. And I also want to mention Google Expeditions. Google Expeditions is um, coming out of its experimental phase, and it's a wonderful tool um, that brings lessons to life. They have an entire website now of virtual field trips. And so if you use the Google Cardboard viewers with um, a smartphone, you can take your class on virtual field trips. I'm also going to quickly run through some of the mobile apps that are out there. You may um, have iPads at your school. You may not. You may have students with mobile devices, or you may not. Um, there are some great ones out there. Nearpod.com. Has a variety of virtual field trips. I'm just going to quickly log into my account so you can see one. And Nearpod also offers a mobile app. So even if you have um, don't have access to the Chromebooks where you are, you can log in and use um, Nearpod on a mobile device. And here's Nearpod. Hello, how's it going? I see, and it's coming up kind of slowly on my computer, but here goes. So the website is nearpod.com, and the um, exploration is called Nearpod VR, and you can see all of the different virtual field trips that are here. Some are at a cost, many of them are free. So if we go to virtual reality and free, it'll show us everything that you can access without having to pay for anything. And this is where I'm going to stop and find out if you have any questions. I'll also put that link in the chat box. I love these because not only can you show these on your on your whiteboard, but you can also um, put these post these on the students' Chromebooks as well. And you can post the links to these in the um, in Google Classroom.
All right, here is the link to the White House tour. Right, great question. I want to give you a good link to that one. All right, any other questions? Okay, the question was anything for um, music and performing arts? I'm going to back up a little bit and um, let me give you a, a link. All right, any other questions? Thank you. Are we done? Any questions? All right, well, then I want to thank you for joining me today. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And I'm at kkyper11 at ebrschools.org. All right, thank you guys. Okay. So we're gonna give us a one, two, three. Y'all know what to say? Keep tech jamming. All right. Keep tech jamming.